Good evening, afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the live webinar with Admo Markets. My name is Chris. We'll be taking a look at the Forex market and some other uh, instruments, commodities, uh, maybe some stock indices. First of all, though, uh, be aware that this video, and sorry, this webinar and later on video is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdvoMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact appropriate entity for more info and to find out if it is suitable for you. Also, please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, and you are aware of the risk. Uh, you are aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty. Uh, first of all, I wanted to take a look with you at AdvoMarkets.com. Please note that uh, before looking at trading, always take a look at the calendar just to be aware of the, the major uh, news events that are coming up. And uh, you can see that here with this calendar and you can go to a list of events that are uh, coming up for today and this week. Uh, also, I wanted to let you know that you can find, if you're watching later on the recording, you can find live webinars uh, of course, here with analytics, no education, Forex and CFD webinars, and you can sign up for more sessions. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have live session. Thursday, we take a look at some educational topic. This week, we take a look at trading psychology and tackling fear. And uh, also wanted to let you know about our analytics. You can find fundamental technical wave analysis, articles, some useful tools uh, that you can see here, heat map and sentiment. Uh, some Forex courses, uh, and of course, obviously, the MT4 Supreme Edition, and you can use that to tackle the markets by a demo or, of course, a real account. All of that you can do right there. All right, so with regard to the markets, let's take a look. There we go. So good to see everyone, Bando, Ahmed, Robert, good to see everyone, a lot of people here today, that's great. Uh, I think that at this moment, we're seeing a bit of a retracement on the euro dollar, and I think, personally myself, I think it's a retracement for more upside. Uh, I mentioned that particular analysis already yesterday uh, in the Monday video, and I said that I think there's a good chance of a retracement and a continuation, and we are getting the retracement that has already occurred, so that check that has happened uh, for most of us probably I'm not sure if you're a reversal trader if you're not you didn't catch this if you are maybe you got some pips on the downside personally I'd rather wait for the downside retracement to finish and I'll rather trade it to the upside towards 115 um, if uh, if you traded it to the downside there's a good chance that you made some pips I would say it's still a, about a hundred pip move so far a bit more and now it is right at the weekly pivot point which of course could be a bouncing spot and if you look at the four-hour chart specifically, I think it would be fair to put a fib on this swing high, swing low. All right, there we go. And you can see the price, besides the weekly pivot point, is testing the 38.2 fib. So the more adventurous traders perhaps uh, could be trading that fib, putting the stop loss below 130 and aiming at 150. That is I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that trade idea right there. Um, and the other, of course, is a confirmation. Some price action candlestick pattern where you can see a reaction to the support zone. It could be engulfing twins on the four-hour chart. It could be even some kind of wick on the daily candle, for instance. Uh, maybe a bullish candle on the daily. Tomorrow, some kind of retracement and continuation. So that will be another way to, to wait for more confirmation or the outer chart perhaps, try to see if there's some, some momentum here, for instance, like this. Uh, wait for some flag after that or correction, and then tomorrow perhaps take, take the continuation. Will it happen? Who knows? You, no one knows what will really, of course, happen with the market. This is my best analysis. If price does push through 112.75, then, or even 113, I wouldn't expect that to happen. Uh, but roughly that zone, then it's not as bullish as I expected. And the structure is changing, and we'll have to reanalyze it. For the moment, though, anything above 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.75, 112.
max 1250 really 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 max <laughs> um but i don't i wouldn't expect it i would say 113 uh is uh bullish territory and this is just a retracement other factors that make me believe that that's a retracement is the fact that 113 is a strong broken resistance spot therefore hence should become support levels uh in the future that's that's a, that's a possibility that this is a break pullback continuation and another factor to think about is last week's candle. Very strong, good candle, closed near the high, decent sized candle. And I put a fib, as you can see, from the candle low to the candle high. And this could just be a retracement of last week's candle. Everything is, of course, a probability. Nothing is a guarantee. doesn't exist. But as uh, my analysis goes, the best analysis I can do is that this is a retracement for upside. And I think that the target would be 115 and that there could be some kind of bounce at that level, perhaps. Maybe not. Maybe it'll just extend further. But for the moment, like this, I think, is the, is the favorite. Then we'll have to see how price responds to 115. If it makes a sideways move, there could be an acceleration or, ex or an extension, I should say, to 116, 117, 117.50-ish, uh, etc. So from my perspective, these are good weekly candles, and it's continuing the momentum break to the upside. We have higher highs, higher lows. This break kind of sealed the deal that, from my point of view, your dollar is in an uptrend at this moment on even a weekly chart. Um, definitely on a daily chart. It was already an uptrend on the daily, now the weekly. Because before that, this could have been a correction. But with this break, I think there's a good chance that this is continuing. So that's... If for the moment in the year dollar, let's see some questions maybe. Uh, let's see. The trend, I think uh, one question says, what about the trend exist? I think you would exit, perhaps. So I'm not sure. Exit, okay, got it. Uh, exit is fine at 114.50 nothing wrong with that although i think that that was last week's high i think considering last week's candle it is basically i think a good chance it will break last week's high probably this week max next week we could take a look at gold definitely no problem and when do you wait for flag is it the 15 minutes or five five or 50 both are fine really it depends I don't know, it's difficult to say. Probably use 15 a bit more. It, uh, I think both are, are possible. Let's see on, let's just take a look at this 15 minute chart here. Good. So for instance, 50 minute upside and then bull flag. I think that in this particular case, Probably a 50 minute chart is better because we're getting to the end of London and I think that uh, this correction might happen during tomorrow's Japanese or Asian session, I should say. So I think that from this perspective, maybe some 15, 30 minute bull flag uh, or even hourly bull flag, small bull flag, uh, it makes more sense. Pound dollar, pretty much the same in my view. Very similar momentum, correction, same 38 point fib, same pivot point, same potential retracement, same wave four bounce, same kind of stop loss placement below the 50 fib, I think is, is fine. Uh, same kind of uh, formation to go perhaps to 131 and the R1 and the minus 272 target. Uh, very similar uh, from this point of view. I mean, we can take a look at the euro pound, see if there's any difference there. And uh, let me change the template here quickly. And price is more or less going sideways. So there's not, at this moment, I think any difference, you know, particular difference between uh, euro dollar and pound, pound dollar. I think they both look bullish. I think they both could bounce. They might not bounce at the same time. You know, one could go before the other. But ultimately, I think this 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 kind of same type of trade. When looking at the euro pound, I don't see any particular advantage 
in either of them at this moment at least not so same kind of idea same kind of trade setups I think could be market could be pending order more or less the same so we can move on then to dollar yen uh, I'm doing fine by the way Angel thanks for asking hope that uh, how are you hope you had a good weekend I'm enjoying personally the the summer and uh, the light long days the light the warm weather <laughs> and uh, that is uh, my favorite time well my favorite time of the year is really spring but uh, definitely summer is just 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 right at it about the same just if you're if you're in a city uh, I don't need to, to be above 32 uh, but luckily we're having 25 so that's perfect uh, so dollar yen bullish too That's perfect. If you're trading by the pool, then uh, I guess uh, even 35 would maybe not matter that much. Although, yeah, probably. I mean, the C is the best. The C is the very best. Then 30, 35 is very pleasant. Uh, pool does help, though. Any water, of course, cools down, definitely. Absolutely. Here, we don't have that many pools, unfortunately. It's th That's the only thing that I think Prague is a great city, but from a like a water perspective, it is um, it is not that rich in options. You have few pools. I don't know. It's just the river is not that great. They're actually thinking about floating pools on the river. I think they're going to have one next year and then add another one two years from now. That would be needed, I think. You got some uh, wild wild rivers but they're so cold <laughs> it's okay to, to sit by them but uh, jumping in them is a bit too uh, advanced for me <laughs> uh, so yeah I, but they're working on it there's some river pools coming so that could be cool um, dollar yen is yes hourly chart let me get rid of this fib Uh, I think bullish, and I think good chance that this, let's see, either this fib or this fib. And uh, yeah, this is the bounce I was looking for on dollar yen, 38.2 fib. It was rather fast. It was like a move down and then bounce up. So, you know, that may be a bit more difficult to trade. It's easier if it's like a bull flag. You know, it slowly approaches that level. You have time to prepare. You have time to find a better entry. Uh, this is one of those that is like an elastic kind of bounce. It's just uh, like a trampoline. It goes down and up. And uh, so that can be difficult if you don't have a pending order. If you have a pending order, that's fine. If you don't have a pending order, uh, you're kind of late in a way because then this is the confirmation candle so the trade would have to been taken up in here and it seems a bit maybe far from the 38.2 fib but it's not that bad if you put the stop loss below this low it's about 40 pips and I think the target for the moment is 113.90 and uh, any entry at this particular candle uh, still gives about 70 pips space the entry, can, this current price is not too far from this candle. It's just a few pips higher. So I think this could be uh, an okay entry right here even. Um, another option could be one, two, three, four. Let's see. Another option could be for price to make a small retracement. Like the 50 fib maybe. If it were to retrace a bit deeper, like this, for instance, right? there's no guarantee that it doesn't go through this bottom. But from my point of view, this is a strong bounce. This is a strong support zone. You never know what the markets would do, but I think that there's a good chance of a push, break, uh, pullback continuation. So if it does make that pullback a bit deeper, well, that would sharpen our reward to risk ratio potential. So I think that uh, that could make sense. Uh, 
at least uh, I would say for the next I would say if this doesn't happen within before London starts tomorrow then it might be too late as long as it happens maybe before London starts tomorrow I think it should be fine from a time perspective okay we can take a look at gold and oil now and then we can look at other uh, currency pairs if you have any particular in mind feel free to let me know and we can go th through them one by one uh, the yeah oil we were talking about that uh, this is gold sorry gold we were talking about last week saying that this is not a very good bouncing spot it's in the middle and that if anything it probably will rather actually test this bottom uh, but it was in the middle of nowhere and it did break to the downside and is now testing this, this support level. For the moment, I think that a continuation is likely, considering this strong bearish candle right here. I think that this is a, is a close near the low with good momentum, good downtrend, and uh, there's a chance that price could break to this bottom. doesn't have to. We'll have to see how the next two days, few days, react to this level. But, yeah, there's definitely a chance. Uh, I mean, it could be a, a flat correction with a double top and a double bottom. That actually seemed pretty likely. But considering yesterday's strong candle, uh, not so sure now. So I wouldn't be looking for upside. This was in the middle of nowhere, although it seems slightly more likely to retest the bottom. Now, a bounce seems more likely, but not with yesterday's candle. So probably not good for either direction at this moment. The best idea on a four hour chart, considering this, this pretty strong momentum, no divergence, is probably to wait for the S1. If price hooks back to the S1, I think it could be a good bouncing spot. It might correct like this, bounce at S1, and then fall, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it does something like this, and then down to S3. And now let's see how S3 responds, how price responds to S3, because it's still close to this bottom. And, of course, if you put a fib from here to here, uh, it's at the 50 fib. So, something like this. All right, seems likely at this moment. Correction, continuation, and then a reaction to the 50 fib. Eleven seventy four. It uh, it might get there. I'm not sure. I don't have anything particular at eleven seventy four. I have eleven eighty eight and eleven sixty uh, as fibs. So from my perspective, those are more important levels than eleven uh, seventy four at this moment. Uh, but if it breaks through the 50 fib, what could happen, of course, is price does the retracement we just talked about, continuation, uh, another retracement maybe, uh, and then down again, right? And it could keep this this moment until it maybe hits a fib, and then it really starts to reverse like this. So this is it's kind of playing around with the fibs, bouncing at one, but still could challenging other fibs until at one point it uses a fib for a real larger reversal so I'm not sure why 1174 if there's particular reason you know what what you, what you see at this level let me know because maybe I miss something but but uh, not from a fit point of view at least as far as I can see I mean there could be maybe some some target there let's see no not a target either Weekly fib. Okay, let's see. Maybe no, I don't see it. I don't. Maybe you have something else drawn. Doesn't matter. It's okay. If you think it's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. If you if you think it's uh, 22 November. That's here. 
Okay. Well, nothing wrong with that. If if you think, I mean, I don't know what the chances of um, of price getting there. I think that for the moment there is a good chance of price getting to the 50 fib, but I'm not sure about deeper necessarily. Uh, on a weekly fib, I would probably put the fib from here to here. Like this. And uh, we had a bounce at the 78.6 fib. And uh, the question is, you know, is this is this a good first bounce or is that part of a correction? For from my perspective, it looks like a decent bounce. So I think that it will not break this bottom, and I think that these fibs will hold for uh, for upside. So from that perspective, I'm looking more at the, at the daily fib basically. And uh, curious how price will respond uh, to 50 and then to the 61 point, maybe even lower, of course, who knows. So that's gold regarding oil. It, uh, it broke through the support line, but very choppily. And uh, mm, regarding the price action, this looks pretty bullish. Uh, I'm not sure about that report. Uh, I only look like technicals on, on mostly technicals, to be honest, uh, and specifically forex markets. So oil is more for me for a, like an extra analysis that I do f for you, but I don't really follow it that closely. Um, just occasionally, a few times a week, I take a look at it, but that's it, just to analyze it. Uh, mostly trading is forex market, sometimes gold or silver, but uh, mostly forex market, not oil. If I trade any commodity, it's uh, uh, silver, sometimes gold, uh, but not that regular either. Um, from the analysis point of view though, this looks like bullish engulfing twins and from my perspective, pretty choppy downside to pretty choppy upside as well. So it looks a bit stuck in two worlds in, in a way, uh, neither up or downtrend at this moment. Uh, and considering these engulfing twins, I think that this could, this correction could expand itself up to the 38, which is a pretty strong resistance. That I would say seems the most likely scenario in my view. Pretty strong momentum to the upside. Probably any retracement here, I think, should uh, should see follow through to the upside with this momentum. Uh, let's see. Regarding, we got some more favorites here. Ozzy, I remember. Let's take a look at that. There we go. All right. Odd USD. One, two, three. Already so many times it's been basically attempting to break this resistance uh, and hasn't done that yet. I think the chance of a breakout is increasing, uh, but it's taking its time, quite a lengthy process and uh, many, many attempts. Typically when it, price is trying it so often, eventually it will break. But this is quite a large structure. Um, look at that. I use the is very, very choppy. 
Ozzy in, in general, Oddcat 2, for instance, uh, your Odd Pod Odd did move a bit more, uh, but this Ozzy is really slow mover at this moment. And uh, it's, I think, a difficult one to trade. I, I would just, looking at this, not easy. I'm trying to figure out what time frame could be the best for any potential trade, but I must say that I wasn't a big fan of the Aussie today or this week, um, and I haven't been for a while, in fact, and I don't have a particular any particular trade ideas, to be honest, at this moment. Um, You know, I mean, obviously, but this is something that's already behind us. This wick here, you know, trading the break of that candle, perhaps as it goes into resistance. Um, but at this moment, I don't really see anything. So if I'm not sure who is asking about the odds, but if you see something that you want me to check or get an opinion about, uh, Mary Ann was asking, just let me know. Because at this moment, I don't see anything appealing but maybe I just missed something maybe say look at this chart this time frame you know and uh, I might see may see something that uh, is more uh, appealing enticing but at this moment I just don't see it some particular any, any particular formation or pattern that I think oh that could be interesting uh, to try it obviously this could be a lower a, a high a higher low excuse me but price is way into resistance but the reversal has already happened too, so that's why I'm a bit hesitant with this. Let's take a look at uh, Euro New Zealand, Euro Yen, Dollar CAD, uh, NASDAQ. I think I don't have an aspect, so let me add that. There you go. Already. Last month was, uh, let's zoom in there, a uh, pretty negative candle, and we have a break below the low. So looks a bit different than the other uh, indices. And uh, looks like it's making a decent correction. I'm not sure if this is reversal territory as yet. I think that's a bit soon, but uh, it's definitely moving nicely lower. A bouncing spot could be this minus 61.8 at 54.60. It's S2 and the long to moving average. So that could be a bouncing spot to think about right there. Not sure if it will necessarily, you know, the uptrend will continue, but that could be a good bouncing spot at least. All right, uh, silver, way different than gold. Wow, big difference there. I mean, also moving lower, but silver approaching 88.65 with a strong candle. Quite amazing. If it breaks, if the 88.65 breaks, I think there's a good chance for price to test this bottom all the way there. And uh, in this case, I think it could be good to flip the fib around. And put it from here to here. For the moment, my challenge is the minus 272 target. And that could be a pretty good bouncing spot. It would be a potential inverted head and shoulders like this. Quite a 
large one, but might occur. And could even be an 88.6 fib, roughly. So let's see. That could be a very interesting reward to risk ratio um, for, for silver if it does bounce there. So let's see if it gets there. From the perspective of trading it down, I don't see anything interesting at this moment, personally. Not now. It's too close to support. Let's take a look at some others, like, indeed, Euro Yen. There we go. We take a look. Last month was bullish. Last week was very bullish. I think it's pretty much the same as the year dollar. I think that pretty good breakout candle. And I think that to this week could see a retracement. Uh, to the pivot to the S1. Let's put a fib on that uh, weekly candle like this. 38, 61, 78, they could all be bouncing spots. But I think the pivot point of the 38 will, will have its charm. I think it looks like the same. I think that could be a retracement that uh, could see price bounce at this level. How yet I think we'll pull back two indeed. Let me refresh this one. Same scenario, also pretty strong bullish candle. So it could make the same pattern indeed. Uh, pull back and continuation and here too. The weekly pivot point uh, might be a sweet spot. Let's put a fifth ring into here. And uh, could be the same indeed. I agree. Euro New Zealand could be the same pattern. Basically, pull back and continuation. Seems likely at this moment. Uh, Euro New Zealand. Well, not too sure about this one. It did bounce, but uh, I think there's still a good chance, as I said last week, for a zigzag. One, two, three, four. I would wait, however, for today or tomorrow to fail to break this, this low. And if it fails, then I think there is a good chance at the end of the week that, and next week that it could do this. And it might struggle at the R1 or R2 and could turn at those levels. So I think that probably makes the most sense to look for that this week. Keeping an eye on the daily candles or the four-hour candles, for instance, I think that if price shows hesitation uh, as it makes its uh, retracement down, it could be worth thinking about uh, taking engulfing twins at these fibs, try to trade the, the zigzag. And uh, wait, VT is actually talking about a head and shoulders. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, from this perspective, correct? For our, yeah, that's true. And it is trying to break through support. And if it does, I would. There is a good chance of a, a breakout actually to challenge these deeper fibs. So that that is something to think about. If there's a good engulfing twin here, but you know the thing is that there's a weekly pivot point and Keltner right here. And therefore, uh, I would have some hesitation with trading it into that local four-hour support. I don't think I would do that, actually. So from that perspective, if there's a good breakout candle on the four-hour chart, then it might be better, instead of taking the trade, it might be better maybe to see on the outer chart. Let's see if there's some kind of corre correction possible, uh, like this, for instance. I don't like that, but ultimately uh, it is 
Yeah, it is pretty... Um, in my view, this is still a pretty strong bullish lead. And I think that it could be an ABC correction. But because support is so close, I'm not sure about how far this wave C can go. That's why I would be a bit hesitant with trading this particular uh, head and shoulders pattern. So that, that's my reasoning. Um, I I think both both are good fibs, a uh, good pivot. Sorry, weekly and daily. It really depends what time frames you use. I think if you use 50 minute chart daily is probably better. If you use hourly, four hour, maybe weekly, I think is better uh, because they show stronger support resistance. I myself, therefore, do prefer weekly my for my own trading, but I don't think that's a universal answer. You know, it really depends on what type of trader you are and your own personal preferences. I, if I had to choose, I definitely would uh, look at uh, weekly what I do now. But I do think that when trading lower time frames, daily makes sense. Sometimes I look at daily, some for lower time time frame targets, uh, it's sometimes good to add with other things that make sense, like FIB targets, of course, and uh, FIB sequence levels, and um, fractals. Uh, just looking for confluence in the target. That's always good. All right, New Zealand dollar and on New Zealand. All right. Month of the candle looks pretty strong. Weekly candle, good momentum. So definitely bulls uh, in control, but resistance very nearby. And you're seeing some struggle last a few days. And some divergence patterns. And boy, oh boy, this has really pushed up a lot for the Kiwi. Let me take a look how far it has gone. One, two, three, four, five. Not bad. Pretty good run for the Kiwi. Really doesn't have to be the end of the trend, even though there's divergence and resistance. But it uh, it's not as appealing to trade at this moment, I think, as maybe at different spots. Well, maybe the best. I, I'm struggling here to find a trade plan for this Kiwi I, because I'm not a big fan of just like the odds. I'm not a big, really big fan of it. But this, this, if today's candle uh, is is bullish, like this, uh, you know that would definitely break above the last three days highs, set in motion another higher low, and uh, if there's some retracement tomorrow halfway. You know, there could be some continuation to the, to the pivot point. I, I'm trying to be creative in what I might be willing to trade, but at this moment, i just not a big fan of it. The Kiwi, a bit slower here. But theoretically, yeah, the six level is up in here, close to 75. As long as it doesn't hit the lock to moving average, that is the target for the moment. Just not really liking this particular uh, behavior of this pair at this moment. Kind of running out of steam, it looks like, but not willing to trade a reversal. And uh, the continuation, I think, still has an edge. The trend uh, typically does. So. I'm not sure. Maybe break above the weekly pivot point. That might be the best. It's I don't have any particular ideas as yet. Um, 
So maybe best to move on because I, I don't know. I have some doubts about this. I think if it breaks above the weekly pivot point, we can reanalyze it tomorrow. Or if it has a good candle right now and makes that retracement, you know, could be something to think about. On New Zealand, let's take a look at that. I'm looking at the monthly chart because we have monthly candles available. Doji, indecision, weekly chart going sideways after bearish momentum. Uh, that's pretty strong engulfing twins. A lot of Aussie weakness relatively compared to Kiwis. So if a golfing twins like that occurs, then there's a good chance that this is this is a start. We might see a correction and follow through to the downside. So from that perspective, bearish at this moment. But close to support. I think it's uh, ultimately probably will break, but um, a deeper retracement would be nice. I mean, you see three, seven days here. Uh, no. I think this, this is good momentum, and it's definitely, of course, a good movement here. But uh, for me to be interested, I would probably need press to either go to the R2 or if it really goes very choppily sideways uh, to the weekly pivot point and then won't push down to the S1. But not a big fan of this out of New Zealand either at this moment. Maybe let's see if there's something else. Yeah, at this moment, uh, definitely bullish. But I'm not sure if the euro yen isn't better. Or even the euro dollar. After its upside, let's take a look at... Pound is in here. And pound I. No. So, ah, great, Angel. Happy to hear about uh, that, you, that you're enjoying the, the fractal. Uh, that's absolutely great. <laughs> Angel is saying that, uh, that they're very, uh, really cool and uh, that everyone must Trade with them. <laughs> That's great. I hope, uh, I mean, I'll be happy to uh, send it to everyone. If anyone's interested, indeed, feel free to reach out. Uh, you don't see that fractal indicator right now, by the way. Um, not on this template, but it is my own custom-made fractal. Happy that Angel is uh, enjoying it. What is the most, uh, what is the biggest benefit for your trading? Uh, I don't want you to... Uh, lose too much time, but just out of curiosity. I'm also a big fan of fractals, so that's why I had to uh, <laughs> I had to make one that just to my you know, view. <laughs> um, sorry, Dushan, I missed your question there. Unfortunately, it's kind of sneaked in between two other comments of that and I didn't see yours. Which which uh, currency were, were which instrument were you looking at regarding the seventy eight point six fit? Harmonic pattern on the pound odd, well 
I am not using those that much. I just look, I just look at fib uh, ratios. That's my cat uh, saying that uh, she does like harmonic patterns, <laughs> but uh, in, I just look at fib ratios and fib targets and not necessarily looking for those combinations. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. And if you do, that's great. Uh, it's just that I just focus on fibs, not necessarily those patterns. But uh, here, I think probably a retracement to the pivot point or so would probably be best. That could be still a bouncing spot. So all in all, if I think that if I look at the current market, I think pretty simple in my view that the majors are the most interesting for me. Dollar yen, upside, uh, your dollar upside, and bond dollar upside. Um, after that, I would say those are probably my three favorites. Dollar cat we didn't look at yet. Dollar cat pretty looking pretty weak at this moment. Uh, regarding edit waves, uh, where could you learn it? Well, uh, maybe uh, write me an email. It's maybe a bit easier, actually, here. If you don't mind, it's, you know, require a bit um, more time. Uh, let's see. We're looking at dollar cat. Yeah, sorry. This is a pretty good breakout candle. It's really breaking through this particular pattern. I already broke through it, but this continuation. But that seems a bit late at this moment. I broke earlier this this today, and I think that um, might be a bit late to the station here. So. That could still be interesting for follow through, but let's reanalyze it tomorrow. Euro yen, pound yen, yes, could also be interesting for pullback continuation in my view. Those are probably the most interesting at this moment. Those others do not seem as, as appealing to me. There are some crosses we didn't look at, but I know that odd cat and even cat is pretty, pretty rangy at this moment, roughly speaking. Uh, so, you know, from a uh, long-term perspective, I don't think there's much. I think that. Let me go back to gold and silver quickly. Silver, as I said, could be an interesting point if it bounces lower. And I would like to take a look at gold again. What we said there, it's just. Someone are reacting. One second. Ah, I know why. There you go. Gold looking indeed like a retracement to S1 and then downside to S3. All right. Uh, well, tomorrow we'll be back. In any case, we'll take a look at what we discussed today and uh, take a look at some candlestick and Fibonacci patterns. I want to take a look at uh, trading candlesticks at support or resistance, how you can use FIBS for that as well. Uh, on, uh, on a higher time frame, uh, today I spoke to uh, a trader with uh, trading with Admiral Markets, and he was curious. He was trading daily time frames, sometimes four-hour time, time frames, and uh, he was you know curious about how he can improve reward to risk ratios on that particular time frame because he was trading reversals at support or resistance, trading uh, those reversals after patterns. And he was wondering how he could kind of optimize the reward to risk ratio. And so I thought that was a, an interesting question, interesting topic. So I wanted to discuss that tomorrow. That's in Wednesday's, uh, uh, this, this webinar here, Candlestick and Fibonacci Patterns. I will discuss, uh, it's a good topic. It's the, it fits within this, this kind of formula, this particular theme. Uh, we'll dive into higher time frames, how you can optimize, how you can trade it, Think about optimizations, etc. And uh, Nanet will be back tomorrow with his live trading session as well. Uh, we'll be looking at trading psychology on uh, Thursday. And I got an email.
for Mahmoud, that's great. I'll write to you probably uh, to 24 hours from now because I need to run uh, in a few hours from now, two hours from now, and then um, um, a bit busy tomorrow morning. But I think within by tomorrow, same time, it should should be sent, and then uh, we'll take a look at the new webinar. So, uh, re well, let's see. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday the 5th. Well, today is going to be, it is a holiday, so those always make it a bit slower, especially, of course, now that London is, London is finished? No, it's close to finishing. Uh, so, no, it is finishing. I'm looking at the wrong PC, sorry. Uh, I have two PCs and they both show different times, so I always get confused. <laughs> I wanted to correct that, but uh, I haven't managed yet. No, London is closed, sorry. Um, and therefore, yes, should be quieter, quieter because of the 4th of July and the U.S. Bank holiday uh, rest of the day. Then tomorrow we have FOMC meeting minutes. That's a pretty big event. Could be a bit quieter indeed because of that. Ah, sorry, I don't know what happened with the screen. Sorry about that. Yeah, a bit slow, Andy, the, um, uh, regarding the movement. Your dollar and everything else kind of just inching lower. But I really think that still, I know that 4th of July, but maybe not today. I'm, I'm still waiting for a confirmation that I think makes sense. I mean, right here could still make sense, even without the confirmation. Uh, but that might be tomorrow. Ultimately, I think personally that uh, the, the upside, technically, upside looks good. But FMOC could change that. It could, it could change it. It could actually, you could see upside, and FMOC can send it down to 130, and then we can see a bounce again. That could happen, and the red part down could because could be could be because of FOMC. That's definitely possible. Otherwise, this week we have uh, NFP indeed Friday. That's still far from now, though. ADP on Thursday. That's important, but not as important as NFP. All right. So yeah, this this is something we can see. We'll talk about it tomorrow again. Um, dollar index. I don't think I have it at the moment open. Let me find it. There we go. Yeah, starting, it's, it's really uh, starting a, a pretty good downside and uh, I think that more downside could be expected. Uh, from this perspective, if I put a fib from here to here, looks like we broke to the minus 61.8 target. So I think that this is a retracement for, for one more push lower, at least one more push. And who knows, we might get a big correction and then one more push. If this is finishing a five wave, uh, it could happen, it could do that. With the break below the minus 61.8 target, that five wave is not a guarantee, but it's becoming a, definitely a tad more likely. Um, it could still be an ABC correction, but it is becoming more likely. So let's see how price responds. I would say to probably the R1 here. We've got some bullish, bullishness here, but either the pivot point or R1, I think, could be turning spots. That would kind of match, of course. It's kind of the same structure as the euro dollar, so that's maybe not so surprising. And the pound dollar, therefore not so surprising. But uh, let's see how price responds to this resistance. I think it will be a stopping spot for uh, more downside, but we'll find out.
Uh, so that kind of uh, supports what I'm looking for in a euro dollar, but of course I'm trading the euro dollar, not the dollar index, but um, looks pretty bearish at this moment. Um, kind of twisting, uh, making a bit of a surprise turn or dollar weakness. Is, the strength of dollar weakness is uh, maybe a bit surprising, but uh, I mean, considering the fact that it's been in this uptrend for years, but it's been in the cards already. It has been slow to continue this part here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, this uptrend hasn't really been that good for the last two years either. There was a small push up here. So uh, it seems to be, from my perspective, uh, I'm not expecting much dollar strength anymore. This could change. I mean, fundamentally, of course, there could be some rate hikes coming up. That might change the picture again, but you never know. Are they really going to come? I think from a fun technical point of view, uh, dollar strength seems to be weakening. So let's see. All right, folks. Well, that wraps it up uh, for today. Hope to see you soon and uh, great trading. Cheers.